Pro Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Tea Formation, starring Bob Hope with Virginia Wells. Joan Leslie is your hostess. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Ever happen to be walking through the woods and come to a place where the road branches into two paths and you don't know which to take? You finally decide and go along, wondering where the other path would have brought you. Isn't that the way it is in life? We come to certain crossroads and have to decide which way to go, and often we know, having once chosen, we'll never be able to return and discover where the other path might have brought us. The sad part of it is, so many people seem to take a path that leads to unhappiness. You know, it's at these crossroads in life we need more help than even the good advice of our friends. We need God's help. That's why prayer should play an important part in our lives. And it's so very important, too, when we're making decisions, not only for ourselves, but for those we love, our families. Yes, and a constant consideration is deciding how we want our own family, our children, to grow up. Because for right living, children need not only the guidance of mothers and fathers in a home, they need God and the inspiration of daily family prayer. That's why so many families have learned the importance of praying together. That's why so many families are making prayer a daily family practice. Joan Leslie will return later in the program. Now, Family Theater presents Tea Formation, starring Bob Hope with Virginia Wells. You wanted to see me, O'Sullivan? Sit down, Bob. What's the trouble, Coach? The boys on the team have been complaining about you again. I won the game for them, didn't I? Three touchdowns personally delivered by the greatest running back of the century. That's me, Bob Hopkins, and the boys are complaining. You're not following orders, Hopkins. But I'm winning games, Coach. Where would your Boston Beavers be without Bob Hopkins? Quote, the fastest, trickiest, sweetest little hunk of football fury on the American pro gridiron. Unquote. The syndicated columnists love me. All right, you're good, Hopkins. You're great. But you're only one man on the team. But what a man, Coach. You're giving Waller Spencer a rough deal. Wally Spencer. Spencer's a good fullback. I want you to give him your cooperation. I want teamwork, Hopkins. Now, in next week's game... Look, let me worry about next week's game. After all, you're only the coach. And another thing... Yeah? This afternoon, I hung up three touchdowns for you, didn't I? Right. right. Next week, I'm going to make it four touchdowns. And I'm going to do it without help from Wally Spencer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the tee formation again for the Beavers with Hopkins, Spencer, and Carberry ready to tee off. The ball goes back direct from center to Carberry. Carberry is fading back looking for a receiver. If he can throw it to Spencer, Spencer's out in the clear. But no, no, it's a quick lateral to Hopkins and Bob is on the loose. He shakes off Frankie Crump, pivots away from Bobby Gill. Hopkins is up to the 45, the 50. He's through the secondary. Bob is cutting over to the right. He's actually avoiding his own interference. Bob is down to the Ramblers, 40. 35, 30. There's nobody ahead of him now but Eddie Lynch of the Ramblers. Bob is down to the 20. Lynch tackles, but misses. There goes Bob over the goal line for his fourth touchdown, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy, the bragging beaver has done it again. Man, what a run. Nice work, Bubble Boy. Four touchdowns. Yeah, I could have made more, but the other team has to live, too. Yeah, yeah, but we never thought you could do it. Four touchdowns against the Ramblers, the toughest team in the league. Oh, they weren't so tough. One big sissy had rhinestones on his brass knuckles. Where's O'Sullivan? 
Oh, there you are, Coach. Well, I did it. I'll say you did it. That last play made my blood run cold. Well, now you can relax and defrost. When you went around left end, you failed to follow Spencer. Why'd you cut over toward the right sidelines? Well, the newsreel cameras were over there. Can you think of a better reason? I give up. And another thing, all during the last half, you seemed to be upset about something. Coach, I'll admit I was upset. Every time I carried the ball, I was so far in front of my blockers, I felt like a drum major. You strutted like one, too. Only in front of the cameras, Coach. They tell me the rushes are terrific. Bob! Yeah. Oh, oh, Bob! you Yes, your shoulder pads are very photogenic. Your girl's calling you. You, Bob! Hi, Aggie. I'll be right with you. Look, Coach, I want to talk to Aggie a minute. I'll see you in the locker room. All right, but don't stand around and catch cold. Keep your blanket around you. I'll be a good Indian. <laughs> Loan me your fountain pen. I may have to sign a few autographs. Okay. And I want to talk to you after you get dressed. Now run along and make it snappy. I will, Coach. Well, Aggie, what's a good word? Oh, Bob, you were wonderful. That's a very good word. Four touchdowns. Well, I said I'd make him, didn't I? Well, Mr. Hopkins, will you give me your autograph, please? Hope you don't mind. Don't be silly. What do you think I'm carrying this pen for? There you are. Oh, gee, thanks, Mr. Hopkins. Goodbye. There's gratitude for you. I give him one of my best autographs, and he doesn't say a word about my four touchdowns. But after all, you're the great Bob Hopkins. He expected you to make it four touchdowns. Say, he paid me a compliment, didn't he? Certainly, a well-deserved compliment. That pass you threw in the first quarter was out of this world. Sixty yards. Just a flip of the wrist. But that's enough about me. Let's talk about you. How did you like what I did today? You were wonderful. You said that before. You were sensational. You'll be all over the sport pages tomorrow. Listen, Aggie, I'm not satisfied with just making the sport pages. Honey, let's make the front page. Let's get married. No, Bob. For the tenth, or is it the twentieth time? No. You don't like me? Bob, I adore you. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I have no vices. What's it? Well, I do chew bubblegum, but I'm breaking away from it. Good. Aggie, come on, marry me. No, Bob. You're fun to be with. You're the life of the party, but... But until you settle down, until you grow up... No, darling, no. Well, put my application on file, will you? It's on the top of the stack. Good. Oh, Bob! Hey, Bob! Hey, some fellows over there want my autograph, hey, and Bob. i got to get back to the locker room and shed these football ties. Look, I'll pick you up about six, huh? Six will be fine. We'll go places. Dinner, a show, and around midnight, a special treat for you. What treat, darling? Well, we go to the newsreel theater and see me run again. Watch it, will you? Hey, get over. Will you give a guy a room to tie his tie, huh? Look out. That's my tie you're tying. It could be. This locker room ought to have another mirror. I think I combed Mardoni's hair. Who's here to put my court plaster on? Never mind. Here's O'Sullivan. Hey, you want to see me, Coach? Yes, Bob. Come on outside where we can talk. Okay. Coach, I proposed to Aggie again. And the girls said no. You listened. No, I didn't listen. I know Aggie. She's a swell kid and she thinks you're great, but she doesn't want a clown for a husband. That's a general idea, huh? Dress, let's, uh... Let's get out of here. Mmm, fresh air. What's on your mind, Coach? Well, Bob, tomorrow I think we're going to sign up Riley Cooper. Riley Cooper? That's great, Coach. We need a tackle like Riley to plug up that left side of the line. He'll come in mighty handy, all right. But here's the rub. We're at full strength now. And we'll have to drop somebody to make room for him. Yeah, well, I know who you can drop. You should have given him the gate a long time ago. Wally Spencer. Wally Spencer? You're crazy. He's one of our first-string backs. Now, he may have been a first-string man five years ago, but he's all washed up now. You don't like him, do you? You're getting warm, Coach. You don't kill yourself blocking for him when he carries the ball. He doesn't run much interference for me, either. What's the matter with you guys? I just don't like him, that's all. You're sore at him because he doesn't laugh at your gags. He's a wet blanket, Coach. Never cracks a smile. He's a has-been, and he knows it. A has-been? Listen, the name of Wally Spencer still means something to football fans. People still come to see him in action. More of them come to see me in action. This team's not big enough for both of us, Coach, and as long as you keep Spencer, you're going to have trouble. Well, I hate to let him go, Hopkins. He hasn't got many more years of football left. This year, maybe next year, that's about all. And the guy has a family. His family can't run interference for me, can they? Well, get somebody that can. Put Jerry Grant in his place. I'll work with Jerry. I'll be in there charging every time he carries the ball. Jerry will hit the line for me, too. Bob, I wish you'd try to finish out the season with Wally. Nothing doing. I'd put up with him as long as I can. Now, you've got a chance to get rid of him, and you better do it. Remember, I haven't signed my next year's contract yet. Okay, Bob, you win. Wally Spencer's out. Bob, this has been an evening to remember. Aggie, I second the motion. The dinner was extra super. I'll give the chef my autograph. Another hunk of pie? More coffee? Nothing, thank you. That pie put me 800 calories over my quota. We'll dance it off, honey. 
Bob, don't you ever get tired? Tired? They left that word out of my dictionary. I'm full of pep tonight because I'm happy. I must turn you down more often. That isn't that, Aggie. Some of these days your defense is going to weaken. But I've had some good news today. We're signing Riley Cooper, the big Nebraska tackle. No. Yes, sir. I got it direct from Coach O'Sullivan. And to make room for Cooper, he's dropping Wally Spencer. Oh, that's too bad. What do you mean, it's too bad? Well, he's, he's a great back, and the fans love him. Well, he's out, and from now on, we'll have better teamwork. I, sus- I suppose so, but just the same. Let's not spoil a grand evening talking shop. I've got to get home early tonight. Get your beauty sleep, huh? Yes, ma'am. O'Sullivan's curfew rings all during the training season. And besides that, I'm getting up early in the morning to drive to Cleveland. Oh, that's right. You play the Cleveland Commandos next week. We do, we do. A bunch of big, rough, bad boys, so we want to get in a week of practice on the Cleveland field. Well, you be careful with your driving. Don't worry about my driving. I'd rather have 90 on my tombstone than on my speedometer. Don't talk about tombstones. Well, then, let's talk about my favorite subject. And let's not talk about you either. Okay, baby, let's dance. Hello. Hello, Mabel. Mabel. Yeah, Mabel, give me the desk and make it snappy. Yeah. Hello, Mac. Al, I got a couple of things here. A fire in a lumberyard at 31st and Main and an auto crash on Route 20. Well, Bob Hopkins, football star, seriously injured. Yeah, pretty bad, I guess. You got the fire. Okay, here's the dope on Hopkins. Uh, Bob Hopkins, 23, star back on the Boston Beavers professional football team, was seriously injured this morning in an auto accident on Route 20, 12 miles northeast of Cleveland. A small child ran across the road in front of his car. Hopkins jammed on his brakes and then swerved across the road to avoid hitting the child and crashed into a tree. Now, Hopkins, who was riding alone, was seriously injured in the crash. The child was unhurt. Hopkins was rushed to Fairmont Hospital. At a late hour, he was reported to be still unconscious. Well, that's all I've got now, but I know one of the nurses there, and she's going to call me when there's something to report. Yeah, and here's some new stuff on that lumberyard fire. Chief Simmons turned in a 411 alarm when he reached the scene and may make it a 511 if the wind doesn't... You may go in now, Miss Williams. Oh, thank you. Mr. Hopkins has recovered consciousness, but of course you may stay only a minute or two this first time. Yes, I understand. Right in here. Thank you. Bob. Bob. Aggie. Yes, dear. Where? What happened? You had an accident, Bob. Oh. Oh, yes. A kid ran in front of... Uh, Did I... No, dear. No one was hurt except you. Good. I'll I'll be all right. Of course you will, dear. Hey, what's the matter with... With what? With my legs. I can't move my legs. You'll be all right, dear. Aggie, I, I can't move them. Bob, please. It takes a little time to get your strength back. What oh, isn't that, Aggie? Look, I can move my arms and my head, but I can't... Don't worry about it now, dear. You'll be all right. I think you'd better go now. Yes. Bob, you better rest for a while. But I'll be right here in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Just lie back, dear. Bye for a little while. Aggie, I can't move my legs. I can't move my legs. Now, if you haven't swallowed that thermometer, Mr. Hopkins, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hmm, Right on the dot, 98.6. What's par for the course? That's par. Your temperature's exactly normal. Well, I'm glad there's something normal about me, Miss... Uh... Finley. Marge Finley. I'm your new special. Special what? Special nurse. Oh. What happened to the old one? She was married today. Married? Well, that's one way of getting out of here. <laughs> She'll be back again. Oh. Maybe I'll be out of here before then. I've been cooped up here for seven, eight, nine, ten... Eleven weeks, to be exact, Mr. Hopkins. Nearly three months. Wow. Say, what are you writing? It's your chart. I know, but how am I doing? Temperature, pulse, respiration, blood pressure, blood count. All perfect. In other words, I'm a well man from the waist up. And from the waist down, I'm a cripple. I wouldn't say that. Well, what would you say? Well, I'd say that due to an injury of the spine, you're suffering from a temporary paralysis. Temporary? We believe so. What does Dr. Ambrose say? He doesn't say anything. He hems and haws and rattles off a lot of technical terms and tells me not to worry. Marge, what's the real story? Am I going to walk again? Mr. Hopkins, you know as much about that as I do. All anyone can tell you is that lots of people with injuries like yours have recovered. Then again, lots of them haven't. Well, isn't it much better to think of those that do walk again? Thanks for trying to cheer me up, but it's no use. I'll never take another step. That's Aggie. I don't want to see her. Too late, old dear. I'm already in. Hello, Aggie. 
And why don't you want to see me? I'm not in the mood for visitors. All the more reason why you should have some. Well, as long as you're here, sit down. Meet my new special, Miss Finley. Miss Finley, Miss Williams. How do you do, Miss Finley? How's the patient? He's all right. I'm not all right. I'm hungry. Haven't had a thing since lunch except one thin thermometer. I'll go out and put in a double order for dinner. Good. Make it two of everything except the penicillin shots. Oh, Bob, you're almost your old self again. You want to know the truth, Aggie? Look at these legs. I can't even move one little muscle. I can't even feel that I have legs. I'll never walk again. Bob, don't say that. It's true, Aggie. I know. Believe me, I've tried to walk. I want to walk, but it takes more than just wanting to. Bob, you will walk again. And until you do walk, we can be happy waiting together. Together? Aggie, I can't marry you now. Bob, you love me, don't you? That's just it. It's because I love you that I won't let you waste yourself on me. Oh, you're still selfish. You're still thinking about yourself, the way you feel. Well, how about the way I feel? Doesn't that matter? Mm. Yes, Aggie, of course. To me, things are no different than they ever were. Supposing you are like this for a few weeks, a few months more, what is that compared to all the rest of our lives? Suppose I'm like this all the rest of our lives. Don't say that. Don't even think it. I can't help thinking of it because it's true, Aggie. I'll never walk again. Bob, please. I'll never walk again. Hello. Hello. I know who you are. Who am I? You're Bob Hopkins. My mommy and my daddy told me you're a football player, too. An ex-football player. Who are you? I'm Janie. Oh, Janie, come in and have a chair. Thank you. I can't stay long. I'm saying goodbye to everybody. I'm going home today. I'm sorry I can't get up, but... I know. You're sick. That's why you're here, isn't it? Yes, Janie. I got hurt, but now I'm almost well, excepting my legs. Your legs don't work right? No, Janie. They don't work at all. Oh. But you'll get better. Well, it's nice to think so. Don't you think so, Mr. Bob? No, Janie. I know I'll never walk again. Why? Well, I suppose it's something that just can't be helped, see? But what about God? He can help you, can't he? What'd you say? I was just like you. I had in... in... Infantile paralysis? Uh-huh. I couldn't even sit up like you can. And then I asked God to help me. God, huh? Uh-huh. He's smart. He can do everything. That's all? My mommy said so. God makes the flowers and the grass grow. And you know what I said to him? What? I said, please, God, make my legs get strong, because you know why? Why? Because I wanted to run and play games again and everything. So you know what? What, Janie? I kept praying and praying and praying. I see. Because that's what my mommy says you have to do. Keep praying, huh? Uh-huh. Because you know why? Why? Because the doctors can't do everything all by themselves sometimes. So you know what? What? I said to God... Please, God, help the doctors make my legs strong. You prayed for the doctors, too? Uh-huh. And the nurses, too. I see. <laughs> so they all started working together, doctor, nurses, and you. And God, too, Mr. Bob. And God, too, Jane. Hmm. It was... Well, it was like teamwork, huh? What? I mean, everybody was working together for Janie's legs. Uh-huh. That's teamwork. And then you know what, Mr. Bob? What? After a long, 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 long time, my toe wiggle. You don't say so. Uh-huh. And then my other toe wiggle, too. Then my foot. And now, look, I can walk just as good as anybody, see? Janie, that's wonderful. I have to go now, Mr. Bob. My mommy is... Just a minute, Janie. Hey, you know something? What? You've done me more good than anything I've had here. Did I? Yeah, and you know something else? Up until today, I never knew the meaning of a certain word. What word, Mr. Bob? Teamwork, honey. Teamwork. Come in. Hi. Hello, Aggie. Hey, is that a new dress? Yes, how do you like it? <laughs> Say no more. Now I know you're getting better. What's been happening? Hey, would you laugh if I told you I've been praying? No, Bob, you know I wouldn't laugh. But I'm a bit curious. A little girl wandered in here this morning. She said her name was Janie. She had infantile paralysis and recovered from it. She seemed to think it was the most natural thing in the world. What, prayer? Yeah, but she made it sound like teamwork. Teamwork with God. I like that, Bob. So I thought I'd try that kind of a T formation. T for teamwork. 
Janie knew better than I did what to say to you. Say, see if you can find her, will you? I want to talk to Janie some more. I want to talk to her, too, Bob. I want to see this other woman in your life. She's a dangerous rival, Aggie. She must be all of five years old. you hurry. Can't you go faster? Going as fast as I can in this traffic, lady. Did you say the Fairmont Hospital? Yes. What's the matter? I don't know. It must be something dreadful. He may have had a relapse. Some friend of yours? It's Bob Hopkins. Oh, a football player. I saw in the papers he was getting along pretty good. Yes, he has been improving, but there was a phone message at my hotel telling me to come at once. Oh, hurry, please, hurry. I'll pull in the driveway now. Hang on. And... Here you are, lady. Hope it's nothing serious. Thank you. Keep the change. Oh, thank you. Fourth floor, please, and hurry. Yes, ma'am. Do you know if anything's happened to Bob Hopkins? I haven't heard about anything. Well, I got a phone message telling me to rush right over. Nobody said anything to me, miss. Uh, fourth floor. Here yeah. you are. Thank you. Oh, Miss Finley, what has happened to Bob? Why, nothing. Nothing that I know of. Well, I got a phone message to come over immediately. There must be something wrong. Well, let's go find out. to go in, Miss Finley. You go first. All right. Well, what's going on in here? Margie, Aggie, come here, quick. What's the matter? Look, I can wiggle my big toe. Now, Aggie, you sit down here while I go in there and give Coach O'Sullivan the surprise of his life. <laughs> All right, Bob. This should be good. Come in. Well, hello, Coach. Do I get my old jersey number 13 back? Bob Hopkins! In the flesh, Coach, and as good as ever. Better, maybe? Why, Bob, you old linebuster, you as I live and breathe, it's old braggadocio himself. Flattery will get you nowhere, Coach. Oh, oh I can't believe it. Last I heard of you, you were still in the hospital. I was a wheelchair jockey in those days, Coach. I still hold the record for the straightaway down the main corridor. I got 14 traffic tickets for double parking near the water cooler. Oh, same old Bob. Not quite the same, Coach. I'm not bragging anymore. I didn't want to brag about making a comeback. I wanted to let the results speak for themselves. What have you been doing? Uh, a little research on teamwork. You're as good as ever, huh? I think so, Coach, but I don't want you to take my word for it. Just give me a chance to work out with the team, then I'll leave it up to you. That's fair enough, Bob. And if you're even half as good as you were, you've got a job. I hope so, Coach. I'm thinking of getting married. Congratulations. That's allowed. Aggie doesn't know it yet. Says you. Oh, by the way, Bob, I uh, suppose you know that Wally Spencer's back on the team. He took your place when you were hurt. I know, and I saw by the papers the old boy did all right. Do you think he can make the grade this year? I don't know, Bob. Wally's legs are getting a bit wobbly. Well, you just have so many touchdowns in you. When you run those out, you're through. It's pretty tough when a guy finds out he's through. I know. Yeah? Say, did you ever think about making Wally an assistant coach? I think he'd do a swell job with a backfield. Say, when you had that accident, did you hit your head on something? You used to hate the sight of Wally, remember? Yeah, but that was some time ago. I've been doing a lot of thinking since then. Well, you have changed. For the better, I hope. You know, I'm not so proud of the guy I used to be. I guess I was one of O'Sullivan's biggest headaches. Well, Bob, I'll tell you this much. I named one of my pet ulcers after you. What an honor. You know, I think you're right about Wally. He'd make a good backfield coach. Sure he would. I'll talk to him about it this afternoon. He's coming by pretty soon. Good. Hello, Sullivan. May I come in? Well, hello, Agnes. Of course. Bob should have brought you in. I wanted to talk business, and women are very distracting, especially this one. Thank you. And speaking of business, there's a little girl outside to see you, Sullivan. She's Wally Spencer's daughter, and she wants to tell you that Mr. Spencer will be a little late. Well, bring her in, Agnes. She's a cute kid. Yes, she is. Come in, honey. Mr. Sullivan mm. wants to see you. Now, Coach, I'd like to work out with a team all this week, and I... Hey, look. Janie. It's Janie. Mr. Bob. Oh, Mr. Bob. <laughs> look, Janie, I'm walking again. Of course, Mr. Bob. I just knew you would. And your name is Janie Spencer? You're Wally Spencer's little girl? Yes, Mr. Bob. I thought you knew. My daddy was the one who told me to see you. Janie, we hunted all over for you. Haggy, this is Janie. Well, Janie, how wonderful. Coach, this little girl walked into my hospital room one day. I didn't know who she was, but she taught me a lot. Well, what do you know? It wasn't me, Mr. Bob. It was you and God. Well, just the same. You call the signals on the play, Janie. Now I'm all well again, and I have my old job back, I think. And I'm going to get married. And, oh, oh, I shouldn't have said that. But you did say it. Aggie, I wanted to wait until I found the engagement ring I bought you. I had it in the suit I was wearing when I got hurt. I've been trying to find it. 
Coach, this man can't play football. His eyesight's terrible. What do you mean? Darling, I found the ring at the hospital, and I've been wearing it ever since. Coach, blow the whistle for timeout. The Hopkinses are going into a huddle. You have heard T Formation, starring Bob Hope with Virginia Wells. Now, here is your family theater hostess for tonight, Joan Leslie. Nobody knows the power of prayer, but God we know is listening there. Yes, miracles lie in the power of prayer. Faith that can banish the soul's despair. Hope that can shine like a holy light and brighten the spirit's darkest night. When your soul is sad with sorrows and care, there's strength and hope in a simple prayer. When earthly help seems of no avail, there's always one friend who will never fail. Someone who'll tell you that he understands. He'll hold your heart in his gentle hands. Just like a child when his father is near. With God at your side, there's nothing to fear. When days are long and nights have no end. When things go wrong, there's always one friend. Just lift your eyes, the answer is there. And you well know the power of prayer. Yes, the most wonderful power of prayer is seen when a family gathers together to express their love of God, not as individuals alone, but united as a family, in the simple words of family prayer. Family prayer means, oh, so much. It means the strengthening of the faith of every member of the family. It brings everyone closer together in love and understanding. That's why it's so very true. A family that prays together stays together. Before saying good night, I'd like to thank Bob Hope for his performance as Bob Hopkins and Virginia Wells for her portrayal of Agnes. Our thanks to Harry Lawrence for writing tonight's play, to Max Taylor for his music, and to Nick Kenny for the poem of prayer. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Ken Christie, who played Coach O'Sullivan, Ann Tobin as the nurse, Marlene Ames, Howard Culver, Hal Sawyer, and Roland Morris. Next week, our family theater will co-star Warner Baxter and Pedro de Cordoba in The Prayer That Won the West. Your host will be Henry Fonda. This is Joan Leslie saying good night and God bless you. This series of the family theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by a friend of the New York Foundling Hospital which cares for homeless and motherless babies without distinction of race creed, or color. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.